Dang, that clean 180 hit, dude. <laughs> JP's Tundra, um, we're back. So like I said, I wanna cover some of the details. I'm gonna cover the back half, just cause it's kind of an intricate situation. Uh, we're just gonna cover like the whole suspension setup, the integration into the frame rails, the fuel cell and the cradle, the shock package and all the packaging. And I'm not gonna go into any more of the truck. And if I get onto a tangent, I'm gonna cut myself off somehow. So let's check it out. All right, so, I mean, right off the bat, you can see that there's shocks in the cab. Um, we talked about shortening the wheelbase. So, you know, that entails, if we're running a 55 inch trailing arm, there's a couple different versions of, of this trailing arm. And this is a Blitzkrieg trailing arm. Nate does these. I have a good relationship with him and I like his products. So there's, uh, you know, no questions on, on who I'm gonna go with. Uh, this is more of a standard traditional trailing arm. So when I say that, you know, it's a, it's a canoe trailing arm, it's pocketed and canoe is just a visual thing. You can see that, you know, it's kind of shaped like that with an opening for the shocks in there. All plate construction welded at GFO. These are closer, you know, the shock location is closer to the middle than towards the rear. Like the other option you have is like a crew cab style or a I don't know the, the correct term, but there's another option for links where the shocks are, are more oriented towards the rear axle, so you can package them outside the cab. I wanted to stick with this because the, you know, the way these things work is a night and day difference better than like a crew cab style link. And the valving is easier, it's more predictable. You can get the springs right, and it also serves up a bunch of travel. So right now you can see this thing is drooped out, it's on, jack stand here but it's you know at the end of its stroke so it's a 16 inch coil over and an 18 inch bypass the bypass is four inches diameter so it's a 4.0 3.0 coil over this thing's at 35 inches of travel i think it'll be strapped at like 33 if we don't need all that we can always strap up a little more but when I say that, I just mean from, from axle, you know, to bump stop is, you know, 35 inches, just metal to metal. This thing has 16 inches of up travel from ride height. So the truck sits relatively low. I mean, obviously we have a four wheel drive beam set up in the front. So the ride height is going to be dictated by the front suspension and where it's happy at ride height. And then we'll set the rear but it's got gobs of up travel in the rear. Uh, and I just, I kind of live by that with these trucks. I think that having up travel from ride height is a, a hugely important thing. This rear cradle is a uh, Blitzkrieg unit too. So what I mean by that is this structure. So from, from this tube rearward is all one cradle that you buy. So, you know, like I said, it's from Blitzkrieg Motorsports. And it's got a big radius can in here. Uh, I believe it's like 97 or 98. You know, right now it's just the can. We'll have to put a bladder in here and, you know, plumb in uh, the filters and the pumps. It's also able to house two 39 or 40 inch tires in the middle. So you'd stack them, they'd be laying down. The cool thing with that is you can do away and just, just have one spare and you can put like a storage compartment or you know, vice versa, you could have a storage where this tire is and then the tire can go on top. So I think we're probably gonna do that with JP just because he wants to be able to take this thing on big trips. He's more than likely not gonna get dual uh, flats. So I think sacrificing some space with two spares to one spare and making that have storage would be awesome. 
uh, as far as the packaging on this thing. So like we said, the, the shocks live in the cab. We made that call based on not just shortening the wheelbase, but also how much space is in the cab. This, this door, like even if you look at it, like that's a huge rear door. It's bigger than any other production vehicle I've seen. And there's just, there's enough room to fit the cab or to fit the shocks in there and to fit two full size seats, no problem. So we'll sheet metal all this area. There'll be a removable service panel here. And then there will be a interior removable panel. And then all this will be sheet metal in. And we'll put two full size Sparco QRTR seats in there. So that's, you know, the, the seating is another conversation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under here and kind of show you how we tied into the frame pivots. So before we go in here, you know, like, like I said, this cradle, it comes with this vertical tube here. And then it's really nice because you just, you square this up to the truck however you can and however you need to. And then you just connect the dots. Part of the integration was to start the pivots at the end of the frame before I go in. Uh, and that lended to starting the rear chassis right at the pivot. So you'll see there's no frame rail going to the back of the cab. It's all chassis tubes from here on out. I'll dive under here. Everything is symmetrical. You can kind of see everything kind of sights right. But you'll see the the uh, frame rails are wide on this thing. They're very close to the to the cab, uh, maybe you know eight to ten inches. So that lended for perfect spread for the pivot. So the the lower trailing arm pivot and the upper link pivot are actually built into the frame rail. You can see here, so this thing's fully boxed. It's got internal ribs welded on both sides and then, and then slotted on our plate work so it ties everything together. And you can see, boom, the pivots just come right off of that. All this stuff is all chromoly plate. <laughs> and you can see there's different landing points. So, you know, you can obviously see the pivot is tied in one, two, three areas. Everything's kind of notched like a, so wherever there's shape changes and, and profile changes, there's kind of tube integrated into that. These other guys are spread out. So it shares the load through the frame. So it's not just concentrating one big junction into the frame. It's actually, you know, spreading it out. So it's, it's distributing the load. See the transfer case hanging out there. There will be exhaust that'll be a, just a dual exhaust. I don't know if there'll be an X pipe in here or not. And we'll try to get creative with how we route this thing. So this thing's fully integrated. Pivots on each side. But before I start a tangent, you know, this is all the rear. That's a pretty big junction. So that's where your C pillar is and then your uh, interior side of the shock mounts. So everything you see here is root passed. So it's just prepped and ready for a second pass. That's how we weld all the junctions. So everything gets just a really hot root pass. And then we come back in and do a cover pass. So it, it gives some more meat with the weld and um, allows for a stronger junction. So everything's in here. Uh, the, again, this is a Blitzkrieg three and a half inch housing, fully fabricated with their links they all the stuff gets welded at gfo down in camarillo uh, seth does an awesome job with it the upper links are out right now just so i can get in here uh, but this thing cycles really clean we'll have a ewr third member in here uh, and that should sum up most of the rear portion i think we need to cover the bump stops so this is a two and a half inch bolt-on bump stop uh, i like to use those in the rear makes for nice mounting kind of wanted to keep the same flow going as far as the tube work and the plate work together. So this is all fully boxed, every side. Uh, everything's just kind of waiting to be welded. So everything, I like to build everything out, make sure everything's packaged right and not final welded, just in case we have to adjust something or um, move something around, we might have missed something or you know packaging changes or design changes. So this should sum up the rear portion of this thing, at least the suspension. 
the four link, uh, the parts. Got a lot more work to do, but I just wanted to kind of cover some of these details. So if you guys have any questions or comments, um, feel free to ask me and let me know and uh, I'll see you next time.